Hey guys, I'm Lucas and this is the story of my Corbus space program. This is the never-ending glory. It took quite some time, but business is thriving again. First, I research additional stability, miniaturization and electrics, which will allow me to extend my mission time in space. My biggest issue turns out to be the funding, which is why I decide to upgrade the mission control. They can now keep track of more contracts at once, and I use this to fill my account with a lot of funding in advance. I've decided to go for my first rendezvous, while I'll head for the moon again, because I wasn't able to put a flag there last time. EVAs are still not possible at the moment, but the plan is to upgrade the astronaut complex before I get there, from funds I earned during the mission. Okay, no rendezvous without a target, so here it is, the glory docking target. I don't exactly need a docking port yet, but want to keep it future proof so I don't have to launch another probe for my first docking attempt. It's a very cheap craft on top of a very basic launcher. 3, 2, 1 and lift off! The trajectory is not optimal and I have to steer a lot, but I have plenty of fuel to do a back flip and a front flip? Holy physics! I think I was a little overconfident right there, but the rocket is stable again. That unplanned maneuver costs a lot of speed, but the probe itself should have more than enough reserves to make up for it. And we're in orbit. Now to the real mission. This is the core of my lander, with a lot of science instrumentation and an impactor at the bottom, which proved quite useful in previous missions. On the sides I had two fuel tanks with efficient terrier engines. That should be enough to transfer to, land on and return from the moon. This is of course purely based on guesstimations and no calculations were done. The design makes it difficult to add a plausible launcher and I go for a rather unusual one. This is the Glory Moon Mission 2, with two separate rockets lifting a single payload into orbit, hopefully. Without further ado, 3, 2, 1 and lift off! The thrust to weight ratio is on the lower end, but I think the rocket burns enough fuel before booster separation. And that is not so well. I have to steer a lot again, but at least no acrobatics this time. Slowly but surely the speed rises and I am able to follow the ballistic curve again. A quick coasting phase. And I sadly run out of fuel before I can circularize my orbit. I have to use my ship to do so. This is not how I thought it will turn out to be, but my hopes are still high to set foot on the moon. But first comes the rendezvous. I cannot upgrade my astronaut complex without it. I manage to catch up after several round trips and have to do the rest all manually because the scientists in the tracking station have not yet figured out a way to calculate our relative trajectories. I simply burn straight towards it, which is probably not the most efficient way, but gets me close in no time. And there it is. What a flyby. That's enough to fulfill the contract, so I don't waste any more fuel and head to the moon. I raise my orbit so it crosses the moon's roughly one eighth of its orbit in front of it. Still, no help from the guides in the tracking station, so I have to trust in my estimations. Now a quick experiment and the coasting phase to the moon begins. Almost perfect. Minor course corrections and I can do my capture burn. Since my target landing site is on the south pole, I have to change my inclination quite drastically but it should be no problem on a relatively high apoapsis. Oops, now this is quite unfortunate and again a major setback. The orbit was too high and I left moon sphere of influence. I can hopefully fix that without losing too much fuel again. I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing, but burning towards the moon can't be too wrong. Oh oh, this orbit doesn't look good. I should have decreased it right from the start. The landing recedes into the distance, especially with that trajectory right there. The whole mission is in danger. If I run out of fuel, Jebediah will be caught in space. I can see the dread in his face. Okay, not really. Now it's getting serious. 
I repeat the whole procedure and can successfully change my inclination to a polar orbit. I won't be able to land anymore, but I want to squeeze out as much funds and science as possible. This low orbit is just right to fulfill my contract. I now have to wait for the sides to rotate into it. I need to measure the temperature above 11,800 and below 11,100 meters, which should be doable in a single route trip. And here it comes. I'm not sure if I got it, but here comes the next one. Now I got it, so I missed the first one, I guess. I'll try again. And number two. Terrific! Now I quickly run all the other experiments and head home. Before I do so, however, I wait a little bit for a better angle of attack when leaving the moon. This should do it. My orbital plane is now roughly in line with moon's orbit and I can perform my burn. Goodbye moon and hello Kerbin. Now the last maneuver. Oh, my fuel is running out and my periapsis is not yet in the atmosphere. This is close, but on the spot. Meanwhile on Kerbin, my astronaut complex is being upgraded and I can perform my very first EVA. This is necessary because I don't want to risk losing my experiments during re-entry, so I collect all the data and stuff it into the capsule. Some redundant data is lost, but the contract funds are already on my bank account. The whole mission was studded with failures and I expect bad things to happen on re-entry. And here it comes. While I burn up, let's see what I've achieved so far. I don't know what these temperature gauges are doing, but it doesn't look normal to me. All kinds of weirdness is going on right now, but it seems as if I make it. I have to lose some weight though, because the ground is coming closer rapidly and I'm too heavy. And finally, back home. What a mission. I got almost 200 science point and 12,000 funds from recovered parts. Considering the total cost of 33,000 funds, it's quite something. I of course also fulfilled the majority of my contracts, which leaves me at 125,000 funds after having upgraded my mission control and astronaut complex. I am now hopefully ready to finally set foot on Moon, but that's part of the next episode and I hope to see you there if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.